Hey folks, it's Sean McCormick and today we're going to look at some processing for landscapes in Lightroom. We're actually going to be looking mostly at the radial filter for stuff, but we'll do a little bit of pre-processing before we get to that. Okay, so I'm just going to go to the basic panel here for a second. Um, by looking at the histogram, I can see that there's actually a whole lot to go before we hit the white point. But this is a dark period. Um, now it is during the summer, so the sun doesn't set fully in Iceland during the summer. This is the Ice Lagoon, Jokul Sarlin. And at least I think that's how it's pronounced. No, I didn't meet any Icelandic people that told me how it was pronounced. Um, so we're going to just do a little bit of processing on this to get a little bit. So I'm just going to pull back some highlights slightly and open up the shadows a little bit. I don't want to do it too much because um, there are some definitely dark areas, like the shadows on their boat should really, really black and stuff like that. Um, I'm also going to introduce a bit of clarity because I love clarity in this kind of photograph and obviously I'm going to push some vibrance. Now the thing about vibrance is it can make blues very, very blue, so I just want to add some saturation as well so that the warmer tones in the image get saturated as well. Uh, vibrance does tend to protect against too much uh, saturation in warm tones because it's protecting skin tones and um, so that can ultimately make things go too blue i've already done some spotting on this image and um, just so you know that there has been a little bit of work done on already but uh, that's pretty much all that's been done so far so now that we're looking at the image we can see there's a couple of little things there isn't that much color in the image it's just generally a blue tone i could go in and warm it up and make everything warm but at that time of the night it is very shade based so the color tone would be very very blue so i don't want to get rid of that blueness but i do want to add color and then i'm going to do that is i'm going to do that using the radial filter okay now this radial filter is already set up with a tiny tiny bit of exposure that's okay so what do we want well i want some light along the clouds here and then because of the fact that it's light along the clouds we're going to have to have some in the water as well i think this here needs to be light a little as well that we might add try and add a little touch of color to the edges of the icebergs themselves so let's begin now because of what this is i'm actually going to jump and i'm going to go to 1 1 16th there for a second the reason for that is because i need to drag the radial filter out pretty far so that it has an even spread so that way that is almost a straight line on either edge okay so now that i've done that i'm going to go back to fit now we we'll see straight away if i turn it on and off that we have that tiny bit of lightness as well from the exposure already there. I want that. Just a quick note as well that the invert mask uh, button has been selected already. It's sticky so it remembers it from the last time you used it. But initially that's not on. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want colour. So I'm going to use it to do it using white balance initially but we can add more colour from there. So I'm just going to add a little bit of magenta and then a little bit of warmth to mix together. So that's kind of gives us a little bit more colour along there. Could probably add a little bit more. Now the thing is the definition here, I actually need to bring it up a little bit I'd say. But see here the way the line is a bit kind of strong where it changes. Well if we go to the feather, if we bring the feather down the whole way we can see we've got a very defined line. If we bring the feather the whole way to 100 we can see that it is quite graduated. So we have a little bit more control over where this is. Now let's say I'm happy with the top here and I want to move the bottom. So if I hold the Alt key that lets me bring up the bottom without moving the top because normally what happens if you move one it moves in and out from the center by default just so you're aware of that holding the alter option key allows you to change that another thing we can do is we can add color from the color swatch so i go for like a pinky color here i can make it more and more intense by coming up along the saturation here but i think that's too much so i'm going to just bring it down here i just want to be slightly subtle with it so around there now if i want to add that to the swatches here if i hold down the alt key it'll overwrite whatever's in the swatch already there so that you're able to use it on other filters if it's not already selected. So so now I'm going to duplicate this one so I don't have to do too much again. That will we'll double it up. Um, I don't know if that duplicated or not. It didn't. So I'm just going to control Z to undo and I'm going to duplicate to make sure. Now we can see that it's duplicated so it's really obvious. So I'm going to pull this down because I want this to be in the water. Now it's kind of in here a little bit too much where I don't want it and it's on the land here where I don't really really want it so again I'm just going to jump out to 116 for a second and I'm just going to pull it in the whole way all right did I grab that property I didn't grab that property so I'm just going to press H oh I'm after going out a radial filter for somehow right so grab that and pull it in 
again back to fit so we have it to fit in so I'm just going to rotate it a little bit just along where the water is I don't really want it on the boat too much um, so move it around I could actually probably bring the feather back on that one a little bit as well okay so it's kind of reflecting a little bit there now so if I click new notice that it goes back to where it was at the start okay so because when you make changes inside the filter after you've created it it doesn't get remembered it's not sticky you need to make those changes before if you want them to be sticky so now I'm just going to drag along here a little bit okay and I'm going to rotate it so that it fits along the edge now we can see here it's just done a little bit of brightening so I'm going to click in and grab that swatch again just have a little bit of color along there now I'm going to click new and I'm going to come in along this edge here where it's very dark again I'm going to rotate Oop after doing too many of them there so undo get rid of that one click the one we had here and rotate it and put it in position and I'm going to press H to hide okay so that's hidden and it's going to turn them on and off that'll turn on off the whole lot okay so that's lightened that nicely there's a little bit of lightning coming in already from what's happening here with the radial filter in fact I might go to that radial filter and just edit it slightly I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Okay. Hide again. So now I'm just going to turn them on and off so you can see what we've done with it. Okay, so you can see that we've used a radial filter to add a nice little bit of colour in to our scene. So that's using a radial filter in landscape photography in Lightroom.